New Zealand is well known for its earthquake prone geology, but Christchurch has been considered lower risk than other cities such as Wellington. That's because it doesn't sit on the boundary of any tectonic plate. This latest quake, described as a one in 5,000 year event, is set to provide new scientific insights and pose new challenges for those planning to rebuild a city. Mary Gearan reports. The Grand Chancellor building is significantly structurally damaged and itself could collapse. It's unstable, it is sinking and it does risk collapse. But some of the mortar has degraded very badly over the last 100 years and, and in many cases it's no better than beach sand. As Christchurch's history, its iconic buildings continue to fall. It's not only the general public that's shocked, it's the entire scientific community. The September earthquake on its own, or yesterday's earthquake on their own, were not at all unusual. But the two happening together was unusual. Earthquake hazard consultant Dr Gary Gibson has been speaking to his colleagues across the globe, comparing notes about what might have happened. New Zealand is a unique geological site because of the complex combination of tectonic plate edges on the east side of the North Island and the west side of the South Island. In that crossing over, Christchurch is at the southern end of that, there's been a lot of uh, crushing and complicated faulting to, to accommodate the, the change in motion. One theory is that September's earthquake, caused by a fault line no one previously knew about, caused increased pressure along another fault line and it gave way yesterday. In retrospect, some of what were considered the aftershocks from September might have been, in fact, precursors to this latest event. But this chain of events doesn't mean Christchurch is necessarily a riskier place than had been previously thought. The Christchurch earthquake uh, was probably about a 1 in 5,000 uh, year earthquake, whereas uh, the building codes are normally designed for something like a 1 in 500 year earthquake. The heritage of the city, the churches, uh, the, the old buildings, uh, they're down. Uh, those that grew up in Christchurch, uh, their grandchildren will never see the city that they saw. So what will Christchurch of the future look like? Gary Gibson believes that while authorities may choose to spend more on construction and design, the building codes won't need to be tightened. He's worked on the codes in New Zealand and he says the engineering there is top-notch. Building codes are generally only revised every decade and New Zealand's were updated a couple of years ago. The earthquake uh, yesterday was so close that it would stretch any building code to some extent and especially the older buildings. We're going to be having a lot of aftershocks and uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised if we had a, another you know, biggish one uh, and that may cause uh, again uh, some horrible damage but that doesn't stop you from going through the recovery process. Professor James Goff watched yesterday as some of his friends were evacuated from the collapsed cathedral in Christchurch where he lived for eight years. As part of his work for the Natural Hazards Research Laboratory in the University of New South Wales, he's predicted a low tsunami threat. But he says the city's major problem will be rebuilding on problematic soil. Christchurch is, is essentially built on a drained wetland. Uh, a lot of not very nice sediment to be, to be living on when there's a lot of ground shaking and, and movement going on when there's an earthquake. Uh, not a great place to build a city. Dr Gibson says a process called liquefaction was perhaps more significant a problem than building standards or design. It's like if you're down on the beach and you wiggle your foot in the, in the sand, at some stage it, it suddenly liquefies and you end up with a puddle and water and it's got no strength, uh, the, the, the soil fails, flows, uh, collapses, foundations collapse and buildings can follow. The museum in Wellington is one place that's used compacted sediments in its foundation to stave off liquefaction, but that may not be feasible on a large scale. Very expensive. For housing or roads or so on, at this stage I can't think of an economic way of reducing it. The scientific upside of this whole episode is that hundreds of strong motion recorders had been sent to Christchurch after the September event, making this latest earthquake arguably the best recorded in history. And with knowledge, hopefully can come better guidance in the rebuilding process.